In the ongoing war against deer and other critters, sometimes you have some things that are just so valuable and so desirable for animals, you just have to go full on to repel those animals. And that's what I want to talk about today. Right behind me is my raised bed vegetable garden. All kinds of great things growing in there, highly desirable for deer, rabbits, squirrels, raccoons, all kinds of things. And in those situations, you just might have to go full on and develop some kind of fence. And that's what I want to talk about today. So here are some of the materials I use to make this fenced vegetable garden. I went with this polypropylene deer fencing. It's really light, but it seems to be pretty durable. The most important thing about it is it's 84 inches high, which is about seven feet. Now the typical deer can jump eight feet high, but uh, I think seven feet is probably good, particularly if you look behind me, if a deer tries to jump over this fence, it's gonna land in some sort of structure, so that'll probably deter it a little bit. In order to prop this stuff up, I ended up buying these six foot long metal fence posts. Very important that these are the type that are U-shaped. They call them U-shaped T-posts. Each one's six feet long, and uh, that comes up to about here. The fencing actually comes up to about here. So I had to come up with some method of extending these fence posts, and I'm gonna talk about that right now. Just take my word for it. When you go to put your fence posts in the ground, just go ahead and buy one of these things. Bite the bullet and buy one. It makes pounding the posts into the ground so much easier. You'll be able to put a bunch of fence posts in in about an hour and you won't regret it the next day. Here's the U-shaped edge of the fence posts uh, and the PVC pipe fit really nicely into that U recessed area. I drilled two holes in the bottom section of the PVC the, and ran two bolts through there. Uh, the fence post was already drilled with holes so it was pretty easy just to run those bolts through there and bolt them onto these uh, fence posts and uh, those sections of PVC now extended up about a foot and a half. And that was about perfect for fully extending the polypropylene fence to its uh, complete length. And there was actually a little bit left down at the bottom so that I could uh, uh, lay it down and actually stake the bottom edge of it down to keep rabbits and other sorts of things from sliding under the fence. And I think you can also see that the polypropylene fence was attached to both the pipe and to the fence post by using plastic ties, about four or five of them per post, and they seem to work pretty good as far as keeping it in place. And then the final thing I did was I actually ran some monofilament line completely across the top from one post to the next to the next, and this tended to hold up that upper edge of the polypropylene just to make it look a little better across the top. Now you're probably wondering, how do you get in and out of this place? Well, I made this super simple gate. I went and bought this long wooden pole, wrapped the end of the polypropylene fence around the pole, put a little hole in the ground here to prop the gate open when I wanted the gate open. And then when I want to close the gate, I just bring it over here and stick the pole in another hole and latch it up here at the top. About the simplest gate in the world, but it works really well. Now you might be wondering about those flapping pieces of plastic around the top. I just stuck those on there as a deterrent, just in case a deer was stupid enough to try to jump over this thing in the middle of the night. I was hoping the white pieces of plastic would throw it off and maybe deter it from trying to make that leap. Don't know whether it works, but nothing's tried to jump it yet. So when you have to go all out to repel deer and other critters, it's going to cost you some money. Let me tally up the cost of this particular 15 by 20 
deer exclosure. I had 10 fence posts at five bucks a piece. That was $50. The fencing, a hundred foot roll cost me another 60. So now I'm up to $110. The PVC was another five, $115. Let's throw in another five for plastic ties and other things. So about $120 to completely encircle and protect this vegetable garden. I think I'll get several years out of this thing and considering how much money I put into the raised beds and buying the plants, it's probably going to be worth it. So good luck with your gardening and good luck with repelling those critters. Thank you for watching.